today's video we are going to define contact forces quickly uh, we will see how a sphere can land on a box and how are the different options available in atoms to do that <laughs> So to start with, I'll click on new model, I'll name it, I can call it contact sphere. I will keep the gravity as negative because today I want to see how the sphere falls an object on an object. The units will be this one by default, but remember when you are trying to build the contact forces, these units uh, are going to affect the values you will give later. I click OK. And uh, I first of all draw a sphere, uh, a box, which will be used as a platform. I can draw it randomly like this. On that sphere, on that box, I have to build a sphere now. I can draw a sphere like this. Okay. Apparently, these two are in line with each other. But if I solidify them, press R and rotate them, so the sphere is on one side. I don't want the sphere to be falling in this way. So I try to put it at the center in order to have my contact forces done in a good way. <clears throat> so I use the side view and I will use this position option when I will click it I will get this dialog box this dialog box is very interesting and very helpful so if you are trying to move this object with respect to the other one you will use any of these options if I use these two rotations it will clockwise or anti-clockwise rotate the object which is selected if I use these two, it will be uh, rotating the object with respect to the z-axis at the moment. And if I use this one, the right and left, it will be rotating it about y. And if I want to translate these, these are the four keys which will translate the object in the given view. So if I say I want to translate this sphere from right towards left, I can use this one. I can first click the sphere and then I again take this option and I translate it on the left so each click is translating it by 10 centimeters so approximately it's fine now I press R and I again watch it if it is fine so different views are telling me that it is over one another okay so now I try to define my contact for contact, you will go to the forces, and in forces, you have special forces here, and here, the bluish one is the contact force. So if you will click, click it, you will get this dialog box. This dialog box is naming this contact as contact sphere, contact one, and then there's an option of contact type. There are many options. You can have different types of curves to curves, point to curves, plane to planes, sphere to planes contacts we will use it solid to solid and in solid to solid there are two solids which are going to be connected one is i and one is j i can right click this box and i can contact solid and pick and i can pick one of those these two things so i will pick sphere and in the j solid i can again right click contact solid pick and i can click the box okay on the <clears throat> bottom of the dialog for, uh, box, there are different options available. The first is force display, and that is the color of the force display. So if I enable it, when the model will be working, I can see the amount of force which is being created as a red vector. So the longer or the larger the vector is, the higher the force is. Then the next option is normal force. That is the important parameter which is going to define the contact properties and how your, your 
different bodies will behave in motion. <clears throat> there are three options available. One is the impact, which use the Hertzian contact theory. The second one is the restitution, which takes into account your coefficient of restitution, and it is based on the elastic or inelastic conservation of momentum. So this coefficient is telling you how much uh, elastic or inelastic uh, portion of option portion of collusion you want in your uh, two bodies which are conducting and third is user defined which means that you have to define your own function to tell how the two bodies are going to contact so the default one was impact and impact it is asking for four variables the stiffness is how your material its stiffness depends on the material of the property properties of the material which is the young modulus and the poisson ratio the force exponent is that the force and and uh, stiffness is related to each other in a non-linear way and the deformation or displacement has uh, an e component in the exponent form and this e component tells that how much lean non-linear it is uh, the damping is the third thing which tells you that how the contact forces are going to uh, take the uh, absorb the amount of forces and penetration depth is always a small fraction of this stiffness and this is telling how much the contacts are going to penetrate then in the friction force you can either have the coulomb force or none or use a force for the time being we will not discuss them and we will keep them as none okay so that's it i will keep all the values by default because here i just want to show you that how the contact option works i will click okay now if i simulate it i haven't constrained anything so both will fall under the action of the gravity I don't want my box to fall down, so I will fix it with the ground. I it has, there is there are two options to do that. One is that if I make a lock contact with the ground, and the other is I make this box ground itself. I will let's do okay. I will lock it, and I can use the grounds anywhere, and I can use the bar anywhere, and then I can click anywhere. So this means that this box is locked now so it won't fall but this ball is not fixed it should fall under the action of the gravity and the plan is that it should fall on this box so let's see we'll go to simulations i'll click the settings i have this simulation control in front of me here i will say run and let's see what happens okay so let's see the side view so it has rested here and i zoom out pressing z this vector is telling the amount of the force uh, impact force which is happening okay so if i reset and i run it again so this is what's happening i can go to plot and I can go to body and part three is the sphere and I can see its velocity. So its velocity started from something and then it dropped and it kept on drop. And if I go for its acceleration, it should be it uh, the, ex, uh, the acceleration which is in blue in magnitude. The acceleration the center of mass acceleration it increased at first and then there was just a spike where it reached its acceleration due to gravity and uh, then it remained it went back to zero okay so you can see that how the different plots and different variables can be viewed for contactic forces you can also see the kinetic energy so this portion purple portion is the kinetic energy uh, let's clear all the plots to see it exactly how it's behaving so this is the kinetic energy the motion started from zero 
there was some kinetic energy given and then it went to zero again. So this is how you can see the contact forces working in action and this process explains the contact of two bodies. So if you have any further questions or comments, do write them and don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you very much.